Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the BMW Blog YouTube channel and welcome to Palm Beach International Raceway. I am here with Bill Oberlin, who's gonna tell us about the event here today and also about some BMW Motorsport things. So Bill, no further ado, tell me why are we here today? We are here, this is a Brian Redman inspired event it's called Targa 66. Um, BMW and Brian Redman are kind of synonymous together. They have a lot of history together. Um, it's a really great event to come and show all this incredible machinery. I mean, take a peek here. When do you get to see this many awesome BMW race cars that have won races, championships, you know, all kinds of crazy victories between all these cars? And then, even better, I get to drive all these things, right? So. Not only are they great, beautiful examples, but every, almost every single one, except for the, there was a prototype car here. Only one prototype car doesn't run, but all the other stuff runs. So which one are you gonna take on the track next? Well, okay, yesterday we, just to give you an idea, yesterday we took out the M8. The, that's the Daytona 24 hour winner. Okay. We took that one out. Uh, we took out the M6, E92, which was super fast. You cannot imagine how we put new tires on this and you're like, this thing could still compete today. Then we put the Z4 on the track, that was fun. And today, here comes the real fun. LMR so comes out today. That's the V12 LMR, which is still by today's standards, will set crazy fast lap times everywhere it goes. You know, now when they keep telling me the dollar value of that car, it sort of slows me down a little bit, but you still, you get the experience of all that V12 power in the back and how fast it is, it's, it's a great. Do you think that with few adjustments, this car would still be very competitive today? Uh, I think, no, I mean, yes. Lap time-wise, it can do it, Yeah. but um, the way cars are making downforce now and the way the rules are, sure. Um, yeah, if you go to Road Atlanta, it still does a 110. A really? 110 is like right there today, yeah. but it'll do it at 200 miles an hour down the straight slightly slower in the corner, so it just will do it completely different. So now let's flip maybe a little bit to current racing and maybe Daytona. Tell me about your experience with the BMW M4 GT3 and how is that different from the previous car that you've been driving? Uh, well, we drove the M6 GT3 was its predecessor. Very good, won a lot of races, almost won the championship. Right there at the end we lost it, yeah. but we led most of the championship the whole way through on its swan song, its final tour. Um, then comes the M4 GT3. It's all new. You, if you take that bodywork off, you go, wow, this is a whole giant step forward uh, in technology, in mentality, in precision. It's it's amazing. It's basically what I say, Picasso under the bodywork, and yeah. I think it looks beautiful. Um, Daytona, the IMSA, which is uh, NASCAR, basically sure. didn't know where to put us with the rules. They. They, they had our engine, they knew on the dyno, this is how much power it was, has. They also knew the when they put the car in the wind tunnel, this is the you know the drag it makes, yeah. this is how much down for it. So they knew all the numbers, but they missed. We were two seconds off the pace, purely from what's called BOP, balance of performance. That's how much boost they give us versus how much weight they give us, how much wing angle they allow us. And what people don't realize is, if they get that wrong, we can't even get in the race properly, right? Yeah. I had hopes up until the race they would get it right. They got it completely wrong. Our objective was to race and to uh, get as many points as we can, then take it out of there, hope they get it right for Sebring and go race it. The car is super it, super fun to drive. It fixes the problems that the, that the M6 had. The M6 was a brutal twin turbo V8 and it was tough on rear tires. So you could start out super fast, but by the end of the stint, you might have been struggling with the sure. grip of the tire. This was, this was about make it as fuel efficient as it could be, so we carry as little fuel as we have to for a stint, yeah. to be as light as we can for the whole stint, and then be as gentle on the tires as you can be. And um, I think they checked all the boxes. That car was like, it's basically flat through a stint in terms of lap times, it never moves. So as the tires wear out, the fuel load's coming off and it balances dead even. So it'll be super linear, I think, yeah. in the long run. So I, I think they've done it. Gotcha. So from a driver's perspective, did you have to adjust quite a bit coming from an M6 to the M4? Yep, because the way it does everything is different. Okay. The way it breaks, the way it turns, the way it handles, it's all super different and its feedback is different. I was so used, you, when you're so used to a car, you become sort of fearless. Yeah. You throw it into a corner and you know it's going to do exactly this and you can go 120% and get it back. 
when you get a brand new car, especially one that's that beautiful, the last thing you want to do is make a mistake and put it in the wall. So you, you kind of come about it gently. Yeah. Uh, but then the feedback all started coming, tells you what it wants, tells you how to do it. And I think in the end of the day, it's able to produce any lap time you want, providing the rules are in the right place. Gotcha. Now you're also racing the BMW M4 for Turner. Tell me about that car, and maybe we talk about also how anybody can actually go learn how to drive that car at the BMW Performance Driving School in Indy, for example. So it's a it's a support series to the main race, right? Okay. So uh, it's called the Mi the Michelin Cup race. We race that BMW M4 GT4 car. So it's a slightly lower categorized street-based based car. You could buy it, go and race it. And it's great. It's fast. And we basically we finished third in Daytona. Yeah. We finished second in the championship last year. Led to the last race and lost it there. Got taken out. So the car is super capable. Uh, and what's weird is uh, we do schools it, like Indy. Indy was one of the last schools we yeah. I did. And you can go there, sign up. Never have driven a race car. Never have been on a racetrack. They let you drive for a while in an M4 street car. Yeah. You get your you get the sight line of the track, how to do all that, and then there's the race car sitting there with your number on it, your thing, it's your car. They put you in it and you're intimidated. You're like, oh my gosh, buttons and knobs and a weird steering wheel and yeah. all these controls. And at first, and carbon fiber everywhere. And you're like, and I go, don't worry. This car, once you get driving, you, it will remind you of a street car and you will understand how to do it, but you will go so much faster automatically. And they all drive it for a few laps and pretty soon they smile like crazy and they, they go so quick they can't even imagine how quick they're going. So you feel like if you're a car enthusiast and you want to give yourself the best gift, that would be one way to do it, right? Why wouldn't you? I, can't, I cannot imagine that, yeah, I think it's just a, a great secret. I don't even understand how a manufacturer does this. They put people in these super capable race cars yeah. and it works out and I was, I was surprised, right? Because you put somebody on a slick tire that has no tread, it takes a certain technique to get them to come up to temperature yeah. and everybody is having a great time, successful. And not only do they, they, they were giving them, let's say 150 kilometers of, lap to, of laps yeah. and people don't realize, and they have the whole day to do it. And what they don't realize is by the end of the day, they're halfway through their allowed laps and they're all worn out. And they don't realize that racing is yeah. a physical thing, mentally and physically, and they're all worn out. Nobody nobody went to the end of their allotted laps. Gotcha. It was fun. So every time that I see you, you're always smiling, and I feel like this is the best job that anyone can have, but do you still enjoy going to your office, basically? I mean, this is your office. Yeah, I, tr I try to... Uh, try to con my bosses into thinking this is actually work. It's not really, I mean, if you just pan from there to there, this is basically a dream, right? When, when you come to this event, there's zero stress. So it's yeah. the pure joy of listening to the M8's turbocharger and its anti-lag systems, or the V8 GTR's V8 engine churning out this incredible sound with flames flying out of it. And um, you could take it in, and you and you just love every bit of it. You get to the racetrack; it's a lot more stressful because yeah. there's a lot on the line. But both, you wake up. I say, any job that you wake up before the alarm clock and love to do what you do, you never work a day in your life. Yeah, gotcha. So now, out of all the race cars that you've been driving, all the BMW ones for the last few decades. Which one was really your favorite? Like aside from the V12 LMR and all of that, but which one, let's say, you had the most fun in a championship? Uh, you know, the M6 was fun. I like the M6. Yeah. The GTR, we never lost a race with it. Between yeah. us and Schnitzer, we beat everybody. Yeah. So we were so dominant that that's great. Each one has its own thing. Sure. Obviously, when you look at the, the V12 LMR, you go, that's just the most brutal, fastest car you're going to drive. Yeah. Um, when I went to Le Mans for the first time and I drove uh, a long tail BMW V12 uh, McLaren, yeah. F1 McLaren. F1, yeah. Uh, I left pit lane and you're on the pit speed limiter, you already have hot tires, they already came out of the, the yeah. tire warmers and you release that pit speed limiter and you are jammed in the seat and people are everywhere and then you go down the Mulsanne and you're doing 220 miles an hour and you hit the brakes and you see the reflections at nighttime of the flames coming out yeah. and the rotors glowing and the sound of this V12 through the restrictors above your head. I'm like, when I drove that car, I was better looking, I had longer <laughs> hair, I was, I mean, that car was did something to your soul, right? Sure. And it, so that does, that has a special place in my heart. But each one of these have bought, brought me wins and victories and memories and moments and that that I even experienced with the fans. Like when we're here today, 
I've been talking to a lot of people that are like, oh, do you remember when? Do you remember yeah. when? And you get to go down memory lane. And a lot of things that we remember and love and cherish came from all this. Exactly. Now, one of the final questions. A lot of people wonder what happened. What happens to those cars when they're not racing? Do they go to a special place? They get maintenance on it? Yeah, well, you got to imagine. When we run them here, we run them at 80, 90 percent. Like, we run them hard. Sure. They have to be up to the task. Uh, RLL, Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanigan, runs the racing division yeah. for the factory, right? Sure. Uh, so you have your own team running what used to be the BMW uh, M8s, now it's the M4 GT3 Pro Class. Yep. Then they have their own division that all they do is maintain the historical stuff. And they service them, they do all the, the maintenance that's required to keep them on the track. That's why every one of them runs and runs well. Gotcha. So let me ask you this. Uh, do you ever plan to retire from racing? And if you do, what do you think you'll do in life? Because racing has been such part of your life, you know. Do you see yourself doing something else? It's, good. it's, a, it's a good question. You know, in I'm, I'm now 53. Nobody races at 53. And you nobody, don't look 53, so that's, that's good. Nobody wins at 53. Yeah, exactly. And I'm still winning and racing and as competitive as ever, right? Amazing. When BMW negotiated like my last contract, sure. they said, we thought you'd be out a long time ago. And then we gave you another deal. We thought you'd be out at that one. Another one out at that one. Yeah. They go, now we don't even question when, how far you're going to go. We just go until it's over, Maybe and then we'll, figure, then we'll figure yeah. something else out. Yeah. But I would love to stay around this, right? Sure. I love the racing. I'd love to be a, some sort of a liaison between the racing and like IMSA, like sure. America, that type of thing. You've got to stay around it. Awesome. And I don't, I don't think people realize on a personal level that you're also uh, a boat fan, so you, you do a little bit of boat racing. Do you want to talk about that a little bit, maybe? Well, Is that something fun that you enjoy uh, quite a bit? How can you not? So, um, I live, grew up in Southern California my whole life. Loved boats, this and that and the sure. other. Then got heavily into boats. Then, when early on in my career, I ran my own race teams, right? So, I was building my own motors, I was building my own transmissions, suspension, yeah. you name it, I can do it front to back. Then, when I joined BMW, you don't get to touch the cars anymore. You don't get, you have input, but hands off. Yeah. And so I'm like, I gotta do something here. So I started building crazy boats, you know, offshore catamarans, twin 1700 horsepower motors. Then I designed and developed my own outdrives for the boats. Yeah. And uh, yeah, boats now they go 190 miles an hour. I wound up basically moving my home from, from Southern California to Arizona to Lake Havasu just because my passion is boating. Yeah. And it puts you closer to it with no speed limits. And to take a boat and go 190 or 100 and be able to do it effortlessly sure. is uh, it's fun. It's, it's, cool. it's exciting. That's awesome. Well, guys, that was Bill. You know, once again, thanks so much. Uh, I wish you lots of fun today. I'm sure you will have a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. And uh, I guess we'll see you at Sebring, maybe. Sebring. That should we'll, be another we'll good race. So hopefully you get a good result there and we can talk about that. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks, guys, for thanks watching. Guys. We'll see you guys soon. Bye now.